recording? Let's see. or scooters for a while, they know these dangers. It's not the road. It's a dog or a chicken that'll run across the road or a rock. And you'll see if you pay attention, every once in a while we'll, we'll pass by a, a good sized rock. And if you hit that rock going sideways, your scooter's gone. And then the other danger is like gravel in the road and you'll see that i'll show you a couple places where you might not even notice but i was coming down this road the other day and i was late to get ushi so i was going pretty quick and a dog just ran out in front of me full sprint and he thought it would be the best course of action to evade me would be to try to run out in front of me and then outrun me which is impossible. And man, I, I almost lost it that day. That was, that was about as close as I came. So, those are your dangers. Your dangers aren't the road. The road's easy to read. The road sticks good, you know? The dangers are rocks, animals, and gravel, dirt. church doesn't need an obelisk, right? I mean, obvious, you know, uh, Christian symbol of the obelisk for many, many years. Pillar of Christianity, really. And I'm not being facetious. That's, you know, that's, uh, I'm not mocking at all. It's not mockery. Who am I to mock? If you believe a, a pillar is good, good old fashion Christianity. All right. Now this is where there's been some rocks and some of that light, gravelly, dusty crap. I went sideways back there once or twice, just a little bit on the back tire um, within reason. But I couldn't see it, it was super thin. There's 
some rocks here you see all the time. So if you're not scanning that road, um, and the last thing you, so I'm always safer going on an inside corner. I'll be a little riskier on an outside corner. If you're going around an inside corner and you hit a rock and there's a big truck coming the other way, you'll go under that truck. And I've, um, actually me and my brother saw a guy, you know, lose his life in, in Cebu many years ago. And that, that's exactly what happened. He was going around and he lost it going around an inside corner. So, man, if you're going around an inside corner, that's when you want to be your safest. Unless you can see, if it's a, if you can see there's no vehicles coming, great. If you're going around an inside corner and it's a blind curve, you're retarded if you're pushing it. Or you just got a death wish, or you just, you just don't care. So I haven't made another one of these in a while because um, it's, it's my daily ride's the same thing. It's uh, it's the same path, but for me it's exciting. I love getting up every day and jumping on my scooter. And here I'd be considered like it's it's interesting because the Philippines has a middle class now. It did, you know, when I was here before in 05, the wealthy had cars and. But now, because of all these call centers and these cities, expats investing here, you, you have more of a middle class. More people have cars. But it's, it's prestigious to have a car. It's, it's prestigious to have a nice car. So, if you're riding a scooter, you're, you're considered a little bit struggling, right? Sometimes it can take an hour to go a mile. And you just cut traffic. And that's their culture. It's what they do. It's how they've adopted. Uh, it's how they deal with their infrastructure. And I, I'd deal with it that way too. If I was, man, 
if you're a struggling Filipino and you're trying to make stuff out of your life and you know you're trying to get to interviews on time and impress people sometimes you just have to cut traffic Some of you are asking, I'll come back to that. You see this, this girl right here with the jacket. In case you don't know why, she's, they're protecting themselves from the sun. And they, they don't want to get, they don't want to become Morena here. They don't want to, they don't want to get dark. Me, I'll take all the sun I can get. But a lot of them will cover all their skin. And I don't mind, which, man, I, I, I think it, a dark-skinned girl looks good personally, but I grew up in America, what do I know? Now this, this is a common practice here. Cutting the, uh, if you were to sit there and film, you'd see, Vehicle after vehicle cuts to the, to the park lot. I'm like, you make fresh roasted coffee? And this guy's like, yeah, I make fresh roasted coffee, of course. And I start talking to him, and I think I'm going to enlighten him, right? I'm going to, like, draw him. I'm going to impart some wisdom on him. Bye. I love you. Mm. And I start to tell him about this TEDx talk of a coffee drinker in in Bali. Well, I said in Asia. I didn't know it's in Bali. And he's like, he pulls up the video. Sorry, I was, I was thinking about something. But he pulls up the video and he's like, is this the video? I said, yeah. He goes, that's me. And what are the odds? What are the odds that this video, like, I'm Anywhere in the world I could be. I'm, I'm in the Philippines. It's huge. The Philippines is huge. There's 90 million people in the Philippines. 90 million. Last I looked. There's 7,000 islands. And I just happened to walk in that guy's coffee shop. I like the road right here. Just a sweet road or what? Yeah, 
And his name's Asher. And he's a cool dude. I jive with him. Man, I jive with him. I tell you, you meet the most amazing people in this country. And when I say amazing, I mean amazing. My builder's from Africa. And his name's Adrian. And he's one, like, he's one of my close friends. I mean, the guy is just cool. And I met him the way I met him was through the neighbors I met where I was staying. And that's Tom and Mark. And they're just good people. They're just, they're just cool, right? My daughter thinks they're the coolest people in the world. She's like, yeah, they're vloggers. I'm like, what am I? <laughs> but uh, they're good friends, right? Because, and you know they're good friends because I can call them and ask them if I need help. And that's a friend, right? That'll, that'll stop what they're doing and, and come help me. Come pick me up. Come take me somewhere, right? And then I met Asher, and I've met so many good people here. The ratio is unreal. I've got a handful of friends in the U.S., like less than five. I mean, I've got like four or five what I've considered good friends in the U.S. You know who you are. I don't need to say anything. But I've made five more being here already. In like, in like two months, I've, I've already identified those five. They're, they're on my 18th. They got me back. And I think that's unique to hear. I don't know why. I, don't, I think maybe it's the same people trying to get out of the U.S. as me. Um, they all see the same problems. They all... Um, maybe they're all happy. I don't know. Because they're living this lifestyle. Look at this. Look at this mountain. I think that's beautiful. And that's my back set every day. My backdrop. Is a, is a, the ocean, not like Jacksonville, blue as blue can be, or this mountain. And usually my exercise entails in one form or another climbing or running that mountain or hiking it. Here's another no stop sign, no, it's just whoever wins. They've got three different makers, but one of them's made by Vespa. That's a very uh, high-end builder in Italy. It's one of Italy's best builders. They, they build scooters, the Vespa. Uh, the Piaggio, sorry. And you can rent, there are places you can rent for $200 a month. There are, there are. I mean, and if you're willing to look, you, it's, it's, it's livable, it's doable, and you can decorate it and make it nice, and they do it. If you come here and become Filipino, man, this, this shit, some of these families are living on $400 a month. They go fishing every day, they catch their own fish. Uh, you can barter that, you can take that fish and barter for some rice, I mean, Again, so these intersections, there's no stoplights anywhere in Dumaguete and Valencia. There's no stop signs, there's no stoplights. Anywhere there's an intersection, you just gotta feel it out. The electricity here is dirt cheap compared to the rest of the Philippines. They have sulfur vents, uh, they have geothermal. 
and um, I guess the silver vents just shows you that there's a lot of heat coming off this mountain. You know, they, they, they classified it as inactive, but there, there's a lot of heat in there. Um, that, that's where they get the electricity, they have a geothermal power plant. So it's, uh, electricity is pretty affordable here. And the reason a lot of the expats move here is because if you live up in the mountain, you can never run AC. You, you never have to run it. Or rarely. It actually gets cold up there. Like... talking about uh, living in Apollon. And a lot of the expats live up there because uh, it gets cold. It's cool. If you go up there, you feel it get cooler. And you know, the biggest, the, the biggest part of your electricity is running your air conditioner. That is the number one um, expense when it comes to electricity. And if you don't have to run your air conditioner, then you're, you're you know, your electricity bill is next to nothing. And again, so you know, it's just, it's mayhem when it comes to an intersection. Uh, went in the military and 
18 years old. I, I got my first street bike. It was a, it was a, what was that? That was a, the European model of it was called a ZZR. The ZZR is a 600. I think it was a, oh, I can't believe I can't remember the name of that now, but I probably had five or six other motorcycles since then. And I, Moved back to the U.S. I had an FZR. That was a Yamaha. Okay, I had two. No, I had the one in the Italy, which was the ZZR, Kawasaki ZZR 600. And then in the U.S. at the same time, I had bought the FZR 600. Even though I was living in Italy, when I came back and visited, I bought one and had it there. And I've had Gixers. I had a Gixer 1000, and I had a. I had a. Uh, multiple street bikes. I can't even remember them all now. I'd have to go through my photos. But my point is, I've ridden bikes my whole life. Like, I've just riding bikes is, uh, and I still love it. I still enjoy it. It doesn't get old. There's, there's more freedom riding a bike. proper in front of me. Uh, it's kind of like the, the outskirts of the main square. And usually I'll take a little back road going to Asher's. Free coffee is the place to have coffee. Look, I'm just gonna say it. You're not cool if you're not having free coffee. You're not. You're just not cool. You're a wannabe. You're drinking wannabe coffee. If you want to be one of the cool kids, then you have to come to Freak. That's where the cool kids have coffee. Stop drinking that wannabe coffee. Right here, right? Chata Valencia. And there's Freak. Freshly roasted everyday Arabica coffee. The other day I forgot to turn my key off and the lights stay on this day. Honda's and it killed my, killed my battery, but I just coasted down to a shop and they were able to charge me up. So I gotta remember not to do that again. And there's been days that I walked away and forgot my phone. Just forgot it. Came back, it was still there. You gotta have a top box. And that's where you keep your stuff. my scooter once. It's so cheap. It's like three dollars to have it washed. But... And look, you could ride around with this for months. There's just, they don't say anything. out all morning and I had uh, my favorite coffee at my favorite coffee shop and I hung out there for about two hours and uh, went and visited my builder but he was at lunch I was gonna see if he wanted to go eat and 
and I'm just gonna take the mail back to the house and relax for a little bit and go pick up Ushi later. have a GoPro. I have the GoPro 11 and man after using one battery, after consuming a battery, I go to change it and the housing is hot. Man, I mean it is it is hot. Battery's hot, the housing hot is hot. Is that normal? Let me know if that's normal. I mean it's uh it's really hot. It doesn't seem normal. Uh, you can see the ocean out there and we can go straight to my house or we can go left here so we're gonna go we're gonna go left a little bit less um, kind of a quieter way to go if you will actually I should have went one more down still play like we played in the 80s, right? They play kick the can, what do they call it? Dak Panai, Dak Panai. Or they'll just, you know, hide and seek, whatever. Our kids just want to be inside on a, on a cell phone. community down here is really nice. It's a whole 
going to a it's kind of an expat community. Look, they built uh, U.S. style houses back there. a millionaire living right in the middle of the slum, right? It doesn't matter. Just wherever you can buy land, whatever you can build, you'll have, you might have some slums or, you know, that might not be the right name to use, but, you know, just rinky-dinky little houses, and then you'll have this quarter million dollar house, and then you'll have a section of rinky-dinky houses, and maybe a million dollar house. Like, like back here, this is pretty, you know. And then you have a section of houses that are, I don't know, they cost. I don't know. I can tell you the building is pretty cheap back here. I know what these two houses cost because my landlord told me I'm not going to share it. It's less than you think. I'm willing to bet, unless you've built here. my G-Rod right there. Had I had a Kickstarter, I just could have kickstarted it and the alternator would have recharged the, the battery.
I was parking the scooters up there, but we've got about 50 Bollock Bayon boxes coming. And we filled up the house already. So that's what I have. Until next time, Mangi Higala.